Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Um, today we're looking at a data set of basketball players, and I'm not sure why uh, this is the image for the data set because um, this is, in fact, a data set of basketball player statistics. Um, and basically, what we're going to do uh, is try to predict the final target variable, which is um, indicating whether a given player's career is greater than five years or not. So it's a binary variable, uh, one meaning it's greater than five years, zero meaning it's not. So we'll try to predict that based on a bunch of different uh, statistics for each player. All right, let's get into the notebook. I'm going to import NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. Um, then we'll use PyPlot and Seaborn for visualization. Um, actually, I'm not sure I'll use Seaborn today, just PyPlot. Uh, and then we'll use the train test split function function and standard scalar from sklearn for pre-processing. Uh, finally, uh, I should separate this. We're going to use a, a just a simple logistic regression model. <gasps> oh, excuse me, I have hiccups. Um, and then we're going to use k-means and principal component analysis uh, to sort of see uh, an unsupervised learning al algorithm uh, as well as supervised. So let's go ahead and import all of those and I'll load in the, da in the data using pandas.readcsv. I can grab the file path up here, paste it in, and take a look. So uh, immediately I can't see all the columns. So normally I go into the console, but I'm actually just going to put it up here and type pandas.set option max columns none. And this way we reload it uh, and we can see all the columns. So everything is in numerical form. There are no text values here except for the names. Um, and I would like to check if we have any missing values. So I'm going to get some info on the data set. Um, and it looks like we may have one column with missing values here, the 3.% column. Uh, so we'll, we'll want to uh, fill those in when we start pre-processing, which is right now. So I'm going to create a function called preprocess inputs. This is going to take in a data frame, uh, actually just a data frame. We're going to make a copy of the data frame, and then at the end, we'll return the data frame. So right now, all this does is copy our data frame. So I'm going to pass in data to uh, preprocess inputs, and I'm going to store the processed version in X. So right now, X just looks the same. Uh, but now we can add things in here and see how it affects the data set. So first thing I want to do, if I want to make predictions, I want to drop the name. Um, so let's actually do that. And the reason I'm dropping it is because this is sort of like a unique identifier uh, for a given record. So it doesn't provide anything um, useful uh, in terms of making predictions. Uh, but this might be useful later, so you may want to save the na save the name in its own variable before you drop it. I'm just going to drop it, drop name column. All right, and now um, I guess the next thing to do is fill the missing values. So I think uh, there's only one column with missing values. That will be the three point percent column. So let's take the column and set it equal to a version of itself that has the missing values filled. So we'll use the fill NA function, which will fill missing values with whatever value we give it. Um, and because this is a numerical, col a numerical column, uh, here it is, uh, a missing value can be uh, imputed based on the mean of the column. So what I'll do is fill it with the mean of the, co of the column. So I'm gonna take the mean and pass it into the fill NA function. And I'll store that back in the original column. Okay, so now if I return this, uh, we can't see any difference now. Uh, the name column is gone, but but there uh, we have to assume that the number of missing values in the column um, has become zero. We can check that with x dot is n a, which will give us true or false based on if there's a missing value there, and we can then sum over both ax axes uh, to get the total number of missing values in the data set, which is zero. So we know we have no more missing values. Now we can split the, split the data. 
Uh, so split df into x and y. So y is going to be uh, just the, y is what we're trying to predict. So it's the t target column. So y is df sub target. And then x is everything else besides the target column. So I'll drop drop it from axis one and, pat and save it in x. All right, um, then we'll do our train test split. So uh, we want to put 70% of the data into the train set and use the other 30% for the test set. So for this, we'll use the train test split function from SK, sklearn, uh, which takes in x and y, and we specify a train size. 70% works. Uh, this will also sh also shuffle the data, so I'll say sh shuffle equals true. Uh, this is on by default, uh, and I want to include a random state so that we can reproduce the shuffle the shuffle each time. So, uh, and then this will return four new sets of the data, x train, x test, y train, and y, te y test. Okay, uh, so let's return these, these ones now. And I'll get them back over here. Then we can take a look at a y, at x train. So you'll notice the target column is gone. That has been sent to y train. And these are both just 70% of the of the data, the rest of the data is in the test set, which contains the other 30%. Um, so now let's scale the data. So currently, uh, if we take a look at, we can call dot describe on the data set to see the means of each co of each column. We can see they're all very different. Uh, this one has 44. This one has six. Example, uh, they're all over the place. In addition, the, the variances or standard deviations are all over the place as, as well. So I'd like to standardize each column so that they all take on the same range of values, or at least a similar range. Uh, so I'll use a standard scalar uh, from sklearn, and the standard scalar will give each column a mean of zero and a variance of one. So let's fit the standard scalar just to the train set, because we want to assume we only have access to the train set at the time um, of pre-processing, and then we'll transform x train, and we'll transform x test uh, using the fit that we have just to the to the train set, and then we can return those. And you can see we actually have it shown as a numpy array now, uh, because the transform function returns a numpy array. So I'm going to turn them back into data frames um, after they are scaled and keep the column names on as x.columns. All right, now we can see it properly. Uh, and there's one more thing I want to do in this case. Um, we actually had the, if we look at y train, for example, you can see the indices are sort of retained from when we shuffled it, when we did the train test split. So these are the original indices of the data. Um, and I would like to, okay, so I'd, I'd like to keep these indices on for the X uh, set as well. So all we have to do for that is when we create, uh, the, the reason it got re reset is because we did scalar.transform, which resets everything. Uh, we tried to recreate the data frame, but we didn't specify the index. I want the index to be xtrain.index, which will keep it the same as the old X train, which is the same as the Y train. And down here, um, I want to do x test dot index. And now uh, you can see we have the actual correct indices here that match up with y, with y train. And you'll see why we're going to keep that on in just a second. OK, yeah, actually, I should show this again. Now that we've scaled the data, uh, the, the means are all extremely close to 0, and the standard deviations are all extremely close to 1. Uh, excuse me. So uh, that uh, ha we have scaled it properly, and I believe we're ready to train. Okay. So I'm just going to do a simple model today, literally just three lines of code. Uh, we'll use a logistic regression model from sklearn. Then I will fit the model to the train set and print out the results. Uh, sorry. Uh, it should be x train and y train. And we're going to print out, I'll say results or accuracy equals model.score x test y test. 
So this will evaluate the model on the test set and then store the accuracy value it returns in the accuracy. And then we'll say um, test accuracy. I'll display it to two decimal places and format it with a percent sign after it. Here pass in ACK times 100 since we're doing a percentage. All right, we got 71.22% accuracy. So not bad. I'm not going to go um, into like model optimization today because I want to try doing some unsupervised learning as well, clustering with the k-means algorithm. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so k-means is a very um, intuitive and simple algorithm, but it's a great way of clustering data uh, into segments if you don't already have a way to do have a way to do that. Uh, so the way we use this is with the k-means. Uh, we could, it's like we create a k-means object from sklearn, uh, and we specify a number of clusters in here. Let's say four. This can be anything. This is our cho our choosing. This is the k in the k-means, and then we'll fit this object to the train set. So k-means dot fit x train, and what that will do essentially is um, for each example, we'll, we'll randomly initialize four cluster centers. Um, and then for each example, uh, it'll find the cluster center which is closest using Euclidean distance to the exa example. And then it will sort of like um, classify that example uh, according to which cluster center is closest. And then um, it will, after all the examples have been assigned to, cl to clusters, it will recalculate the cluster centers based on the means of the new cluster uh, classifications. So I'll show you what the end result looks like. Um, if we uh, we can we can actually get the cluster values for each uh, for each um, training example. Now I'm only using uh, the training set here, but that's okay. Um, so we can get k means dot labels after it's been trained. So let's take a look at this. Actually, I'll just do that. So we'll fit it, and then we get back these labels. So these are the clusters that each example has been assigned to. And you can see now why we wanted to keep the, keep the indices per, uh, correctly, because we want to sort of uh, match these up with the target values as well. So um, here's the thing. We, can't, we don't have any way of visualizing uh, these clusters because our data set is uh, 937, sorry, not, it has 19 columns. So it, it, you could think of it as being in 19 dimensional space. And we can't visualize something in 19 dimensional space. So we can bring it down to two dimensions using principal component analysis, PCA, which is also from sklearn. Here we specify a number of components and we do want to make it two. Uh, now, if you're using some sort of 3D graphing software, you could make it three. Um, theoretically, and then visualize it in three dimensions. But we're just doing it in two, dimen two dimensions, so I'm setting that to two. And then we're, we're going to call pca.fit transform. So what this will, will do is we'll fit um, we'll, on what we pass in, and then we'll also transform that. So we're doing that on x train. So this will map x train down into two dimensions so that we can visualize it along two principal axes. Uh, and afterwards, I want to turn that back into a data frame. And I'll keep the indices as they were. So index equals xtrain.index. And the columns will now be, uh, since we only have two, I'm going to make it PC1 and PC2. All right, and this is x reduced. I'll call it x reduced. Uh, and let's take a look at x reduced down here. So this is, this is the same 937 examples, but we've uh, compressed the data down into two dimensions now, so each example only has two values associated with it. And we can call these uh, new values PC1 and PC2. Um, and these are actually uh, the axes along which the data varied the most um, in the original data set. So, okay. So now we have two, we can plot it properly. So 
down here. Okay. Let's create a new matplotlib figure. Figure size 10 by 10 works. And we'll do a scatter plot. So I want to plot this PC1 on the x axis, and I want to plot it against PC2 on the y axis. So I'll pass in x reduced sub PC, PC1 on the x, and x reduced sub PC2 on the y. And then I want to specify the colors. Uh, well, actually, first let's just plot it. Alright, I'll give it some labels. X label will be PC1. And Y label will be PC2. And then we'll give it a title. K means clustering. And show it. And so here's our graph, x versus y, pc1 versus pc2. This is a two-dimensional representation of our data. You can imagine in 19 dimensions, we squish it down into two dimensions, and then there we go. Uh, looks like looks like this. And so uh, our clustering, we can now actually visualize the clusters that we got with k-means using the PCA uh, dimensionality re reduction. So here are our k-means dot labels, right? Um, and I want to turn it into a pandas series. So what I'll what I'll do is um, just say pd dot series using k-means dot labels. Specify the name as cluster, and we'll give it the same indices as x train dot index. And then I'll call that clusters. Okay, and now uh, I'd like to actually put clusters on to the end here. So x reduced equals pandas dot concatenate. Um, I'm going to concatenate x reduced along with the new clusters. Actually, I'll put y train on as well. What? All right, y train, and then finally the clusters on the end. And I'll concatenate that along axis one, and I'll display it, the result. Okay, so you can see. Uh, here is the principal component data. Then this is the original classification for a given exam example, and then the cluster that it has been assigned to. So let's we can use this cluster to generate colors in our data. We can do that by specifying this C equals X reduced sub cluster. And now you can see uh, the clus clusters that the algorithm has found. Uh, so this data set uh, is not so clustered. You can see it's sort of like all grouped together, at least in the two-dimensional representation. Um, and then, uh, but it looks like it has found these sort of like dispersed ones. Uh, it is all put into one cl cluster. So we can actually change the number of clusters we have up here. We change this to, let's say, well, we could do two. Uh, then we'd only have two cl clusters. Uh, we could change it to six or maybe eight get a whole bunch of eight different clusters. Last thing I want to do um, is I do want to plot, uh, I want to plot the cluster centers or centroids. And we can do that um, with an, just plotting another scatter plot on top. Uh, we can get the cluster centroids like this uh, with the k-means dot cluster centers underscore. And this is actually the location if we look at the shape, it's the location for each cluster uh, of a center in 19 dimensional space. So this is in our old space. Uh, and we want to display it in principle, uh, in our principal component, uh, along our principal component axes. So we want to actually transform this uh, using PCA. And we'll use the same fit that we have to our PCA object. So it's already fit. We just call PCA.transform on these cluster centers. And we get the same thing uh, now mapped down to two dimensions. So we have each clus cluster center uh, expressed in two dimensions. Uh, and so let's call this centroids. And I'll put this up here. Um, yeah, right here is fine. And we'll save it for later. All right, so here now, um, 
I'm going to try to plot these, these centroids on here. Plot.scatter. Um, so on the x x axis we'll use the here let's look back at centroids looks like this so here is our x axis and here is our y axis so we'll say uh centroids we'll say all rows just the first column on the x and all rows just the second column on the y and I think that should do it. I just want to color, give it a color of red and a size of 300. And we can now see the cluster centers that were originally calculated uh, in 19 dimensional space and then mapped down along with the rest of the data into two dimensions. Uh, so that will sum up today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section in the section below. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.